Are you wishing right now that you didn't have to become the world's greatest detective after you found out about the affair? Are you exhausted just checking up on him all the time? Or, or, or do you get that feeling that I would get when I was checking that I actually would get more stressed out checking behind him than I did not? <laughs> My heart would race. I would get a little sweaty, you know? You know, I, I was severely anxious by looking, but I felt this compulsion to look. I felt like I needed to. That was the only way I could feel safe. But I didn't want to. Are you, are you in that boat where you're, you're like, I feel like I have to, but I really don't want to because it's causing me stress? Well, I figured out how to pull myself out of that and um, I, I wanna share that with you. So stay tuned. You may or may not have listened to any of my other videos and I won't go into my entire story with you here, but what I will tell you is that um, I had multiple due days. Uh, over a six year period, it culminated into two separations, um, which obviously we, we reconciled. We're on the other side now and both of us have grown tremendously through this process. But in all of that, um, I went through a period of time where I was just, I mean, I don't, I don't know any other way to put it, but to say I was a hot, hot mess. Um, I was scared to death. You might relate to that. And when I found out about the affair, I felt like um, all of the control in my life had been taken away. Because <laughs> I thought I had a pretty good handle on things. And in comes an affair. And I, I thought our marriage was good. I thought we were good. I thought he was happy. I, I had no idea to find out that he had been having this affair threw me for a loop and all of the together, I got this, I'm in control of what of my life, just flew right up at the window. So of course our counselor, which I agree with this 100%, our counselor said, you know, you need to be transparent with Monica. He's talking to my husband. He's like, you need to tell her, you need to let her have access to your device. She needs to have usernames and passwords and all this kind of stuff. And he was reluctant. He was not super thrilled about doing that, but he did it. And it was like someone handed me, here you go, you can have control back. And I thought, oh good, okay. So if, if now that I have this information, I can control my destiny. And he will not do this to me again because I have all of this information and I can check and I can be on top of it. And I did. I mean, I was, I was on it. <laughs> I um, drove him nuts. Um, he is, he, up until that point and still probably at that point, but he was a very private person and he is an introvert. He kind of keeps, you know, his stuff to himself and he did not like that openness. Um, as a caveat, I will say today, he and I are so incredibly open with one another. We actually have a Google spreadsheet that has every every account we have, social media, shopping, bank, whatever, all usernames and passwords for both of us are on this really long spreadsheet that only he and I can access. So we are extraordinarily transparent now and he is totally fine with it. But then he wasn't. But I had all this information and I'm like, okay, well now I'm gonna check. I mean every single day. If I could check all of this stuff, I'll be safe. If he knows I can check these things, then he'll behave himself and he will not do this again. I mean, now I don't know if I said that exactly in my mind, but that's what it felt like. I, I had this empowerment like, okay, I can do this and this will keep me safe. It did help it helped our relationship that he was open, but it did not keep him from contacting the affair partner. So that control I thought I had, I really, I, I really didn't have it. I mean, let's be honest. Um, if someone wants to find a way to be with someone else or contact someone else, they'll figure it out. 
We could be the best detectives on the planet, but they'll figure it out. I was putting all of this energy and effort into being a detective and not into healing myself, not into really pouring myself into allowing that grief to surround me and help me heal, uh, not pouring myself into our marriage. Instead, I was back here snooping around on everything because in my mind, I'm like, okay, well, if I do this, I'm in control. I've got this covered. Well, I got to the place you may be, or if you're not there yet, you're probably going to be there. I was exhausted. I mean, I was exhausted. Um, snooping, looking into all of this stuff caused me a great deal of anxiety. My heart would begin to, to pound out of my chest. I would get cold sweats. I would get an upset stomach. I mean, it was physically, emotionally, and mentally exhausting to keep up with all of this. And of course it was very triggering because sometimes I would see something and I didn't, you know, I, I would assume the absolute worst. Maybe somebody tried to, a female tried to friend him only to find out it was a coworker, you know, that was completely benign, you know, actually worked in another office, but they have been moved to the same team. So she had friended everybody on the team. Well, I didn't know that, but I assumed the absolute worst. I mean, it, it was, it became toxic and it became something I just didn't want to do anymore. So here's what I did. If this is where you are and you would like to pull away from doing this, to try to find other ways to feel safe, because here's the bottom line. We have to step into a role of creating safety for ourselves. Yes, our husband has a role to play. Absolutely. Okay. But it is not 100% his responsibility to help us feel safe. We have to figure out how to do that for ourselves. Okay. So how do we step into that? How Without becoming obsessive with looking at stuff all the time. What other ways can we do this? Well, here's what I did. And uh, I hope this is helpful for you. But um, back in the day, I journaled. And if you don't journal, it's a great practice to have. But um, I used my journal as a way to work through this because pulling myself out of something that honestly at this point had become a habit, like literally every day I'd get up, and um, I would go to work and I would sit at my desk and I would, you know, go through all the stuff, like check everything, okay? I had an iPad at home. I'd go home at night, I'd open the iPad and, you know, check everything there. I mean, I had a routine and every day I did the same thing. It, it literally became an obsessive compulsive behavior. So how do I get out of this? Well, I realized, and, and my counselor at the time really helped me unpack that because I, I I couldn't figure out why I couldn't let this go, why, why I couldn't back away from at least just how often I was doing it, right? It was absorbing my life. And uh, I realized it was control. I really felt like I, you know, I, I had this false sense of control in a situation that was really, the only thing I can control of that situation is me, is me. <laughs> I can't control him. And just because I have access to these things does not really give me any control over his actions or behaviors. He could do whatever he wanted, even though, I mean, just because I can see it doesn't mean he can't do it, right? Again, I'm not trying to scare anybody, but let's just be realistic for a minute. The bottom line is the if it's becoming toxic, it's not good for us. It's just not. We have to figure out how to do this, how to, how to step away from something that's toxic. So if you feel like you're doing this and it's becoming toxic, then try what I tried. Here's what I did. I got my journal and I spent, I'm trying to think back, I want to say probably a solid week every day. I created an exhaustive list, exhaustive list of things that were, were definitely in my control. Like what can I control? Everything from brushing my teeth. And I know you're sitting here going, what? Think about it. You have to choose your toothpaste, your toothbrush, how much toothpaste you put on the toothbrush, how long you brush your teeth, how often you brush your teeth, what what time you brush. You have choices. We all do. We all have control over those things. I went from the moment I woke up in the morning till the time I went to bed at night, every little thing that was within my control. Um, I don't have my journal with me because I'm in my church office right now and not at home. But if I was at home and I was recording this, um, I'd hold my journal up and show you it was multiple pages 
multiple pages of like a bulleted list of things that were within my control. And then what you would also see on this list is that I went through and every day my commitment was after, after I went through about a week of really making sure I had absolutely everything on the list, every day I got a highlighter out and I highlighted between one and five things that day that I was really, 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 really going to take control over and really examine it. So I'll use the brushing of the teeth as an example. And then I'll use something a little bigger. So for brushing teeth, um, you know, I would say, okay, I brush um, twice a day. I brush when I wake up, I brush when I go to bed. I use Crest toothpaste and this is how much I'm gonna use. But you know what? I can always brush a little bit longer. So I'm gonna commit to brushing this, this amount as opposed to this amount or whatever it is. And I really dove into that. Like I really, I was so intentional about the toothpaste I put on the toothbrush, things like that. So I'll do something a little bit, you know, bigger and more fair recovery related. So what's within my control? Well, it's within my control to manage, um, you know, how I, how I talk to my husband, right? I, I might still be very angry at him. Um, I may um, feel very resentful. Um, I may struggle with triggers, but how I talk to him, the tone of my voice, the words that come out of my mouth, those are all within my control. So I, if I chose that for the day, I would be very intentional about what I say, how I say it, when I say it, um, the tone in which I say it. Do I talk like a crazy person like sometimes I did? <laughs> and, you know, would not let it go. I would talk about it, talk about it, and talk about it. How can I do things differently? How can I do things better? Because listen, listen if you're listening to this, chances are you're a wife who chose to stay. If we chose to stay in the relationship, we need to pour into that relationship. We need to remember, as mad as we are about what he did, as frustrated and hurt as we are, we chose to stay in relationship with him. So part of that relationship building process is ours. So if I highlighted that on my list, that day I would be very intentional. And then I went through that whole list the whole thing. And then I would go and do it again with a different color highlighter. And in just every day, I would pour into what I actually could control. So what that did is it empowered me. I started to realize what I did have control over and that's where my energy went. Because what happens when we put our energy into something that, that we really have no control over, in other words, our husband, or our spouse, um, then if we put all our energy into that, that's why we feel so fatigued and worn out and exhausted. We're not getting anywhere and we never will because we can't control him. We can't. It's impossible. Now you might be thinking to yourself, yeah, but I feel so much safer having access. Okay, transparency needs to stay. It's what we do with that transparency and why we do it that makes a difference. It becomes toxic when it becomes a crutch, when it becomes a way to control another person, when it's something that becomes obsessive compulsive and we end up having panic attacks and, and feel sick to our stomach every time we look. There's a fatigue that comes with that. That's what I'm talking about. So if that's you, okay, and that's what you've been struggling with, I invite you to consider that um, specific um, uh, journal exercise. It's just write down all the stuff you're, you are in control of. That's where your power lies. That's where my power lies. That's where any of us, that's, that's our empowerment. What can we control? And start giving your energy to those things. That is where healing takes place. That is where growth takes place. That's when we become the amazing women we want to be through this process. This is an opportunity, okay? So if you find yourself in that place, that's how I pull myself onto the other side, okay? Now, I'm going to be completely transparent with you. I still looked sometimes. When I was having a really hard day, I was really tired, I was feeling weak, I was struggling, I was triggered, whatever it is, I still looked but it was not a compulsion. 
It was just a momentary need. And then over time, I stopped looking, you know? A lot of it came with feeling safe. The safer I felt, the less need I had to look. But the more empowered I felt and the more in control of myself I felt, the safer I felt naturally. So I, I want that for you, okay? I hope that's helpful. Um, this is really my goal as a coach is to help my clients get to that place. I want you to be sitting where I'm sitting in 12 years. <laughs> you know, I want you to be looking back. I want you to maybe be that person who's helping somebody else. Whatever it is, I want to help you get there. If you're looking for someone to guide you through this process, I'm a master certified coach and my ideal client are people like me and you who've been through an affair and have chosen to stay. It is hard. It is not an easy road to travel, but I would like to travel that journey with you. Below this video, there's some free things I want. I hope you grab. There's a free guide. There's a video. There's lots of good stuff down there. There's also a way to schedule a free consultation with me, and I hope you'll choose to do that. Um, and I do have a great Facebook group, too, if you're not already a part of that, so check that out as well. But give that a shot, okay? Try that journal exercise and see if that doesn't help you feel safe.